What's up team, Jake Thompson here, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you some advanced approaches for resistance training. So before we start, you should know that this is for well-conditioned clients or people that regularly go to the gym. If you're a newbie, you probably shouldn't try these. So the first training approach is pyramid systems. You got three different sections. You got ascending, which is light to heavy, descending which is heavy to light and then a fall which is light to heavy back to light. The general rule is that you change the resistance and reps per set. For example like the table here shows you would start with low reps and high weight and then work your way up to high reps and low weight or the opposite you would start with high reps and low weight and work down to low reps and high weight. One of the pros of the pyramid system is that you get to train endurance and strength in the same session. Another is that an ascending pyramid means that you get a warm-up set compared to a descending where you get to lift heavy before you reach fatigue. Some of the cons are if you're working to failure every single set or fatigue every single set, it's gonna be very demanding. A pyramid can take a lot of time, especially if you're doing a full pyramid, that's gonna take up a lot of chunk of your training and you've only worked not a lot in that space of time. As to before, it would be suitable if you're a well-conditioned athlete and if your training is for hypertrophy or strength. The next training approach is triceps and giant sets. So a tricep is when you're performing three exercises for a muscle or a muscle group. They're performed in sequence with little to no rest. You complete all three exercises, that's one set done, and then you rest. Triceps are great for muscular endurance as you're continuously working the muscle. Giant sets are carried out the same way, but with four or five exercises rather than three. Example of a tricep, and here's an example of a giant set. One of the pros of training with triceps or giant sets is that each exercise is gonna work the muscle or muscle group from a different angle. So you're using more muscle fibers, which relates to more growth. Another one is that you're complete in a high volume in a short period of time. So your training sessions can be shorter. One of the cons is that it requires a lot of equipment. So for example, if you're doing chest press and flies and push-ups, you're gonna need the chest press machine to be free, the dumbbells for the flies to be free at the same time, and then push-ups isn't that big of a deal. But you get what I'm saying, you're gonna need a lot of stuff to be free at the same time. The limited rest in a trial giant set can make it very demanding. You're doing exercise after exercise after exercise, and giant sets, another two exercises, it can be very demanding and a bit too much. Again, as all of these is suitable for a well-conditioned client or someone that goes to the gym regularly. It is suitable for someone that's training for endurance if the reps are going to be high, so like 15 for all of them, or if you're training for hypertrophy, it's also suitable because you can get, like I said, more muscle fiber activation, which relates in more growth. Okay, so the last method that we're talking about today is pre and post exhaust. What this is, is basically, if you're doing a exercise that's a compound exercise, the assistant muscles, so for a bench press, your major muscle being used is your pecs, and your assistant muscle is going to be your tricep and your deltoids. So the assistant muscles can tire or fatigue before the major muscles. So to combat this and more growth in the major muscle, you would do an exercise before or an exercise after the compound. So in pre-exhaust, you would do an isolation exercise first. So if you was working the chest, you could do flies first, really target the chest. The chest is then already fatigued by the time you do your compound exercises, like your bench press, you're then working your chest more to failure instead of your triceps and your shoulders working to failure. And obviously the alternative for this is post-exhaust, you do the compound movement first, so again, to chest press, and then you do your flies afterwards to really failure that chest. The pros of this is that it overloads the large muscles, so like the chest, and that may not get to fatigue in the compound exercise. Another one is that it emphasizes hypertrophy on the muscle targeted. The cons are similar to that of the try and giant sets in the fact that you're gonna need the correct equipment to be free at the right time. So if you're doing the chest, like I said, you need the bench press and dumbbells to be for the flies at the same time. Another one, again, similar to tricep, is that it's gonna be very demanding since you're getting little to no rest in between the exercise. This one is most suitable if you're trying to build up a muscle group or a muscle that lags behind something else. Imagine my phone just died as I was recording that, how savage. But yeah, what I was saying is that it's good if you have a muscle that's lagging behind another one. For example, if your quads are the smallest part of your leg and you want to build your quad, you could be doing your squats and then a leg extension for after or a leg extension first and then squats after so you get more growth in the quads. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, like, comment, subscribe and share with your friends. Peace out. I can't say peace out, man. That's weird. No one says peace out.